Hey guys, welcome to another adrenaline-inducing episode of Impossible Shots. And today our Impossible Shot is going to be removing the glare of a softbox from some glasses. So uh, this is a very common problem, glare either in glasses or on some object. And this is not a simple problem to fix. First of all, when you're dealing with eyes, eyes are the window to the soul, and audiences are very good at noticing problems with eyes. So it's not easy to fake this. And typically, you don't want to do a full replacement. You want to do a partial replacement, which is what we're going to do today. The other problem here is that the eyes are actually at a separate depth from camera to the glasses. So if we track the actual lens of the glasses, which is what we're going to do, the perspective will be subtly different from the rest of the eye. The eye is actually in a plane that's a few in, or you know half an inch or so back from the glasses. And that's going to cause problems because the parallax will be different. So like I said, not a simple shot. And today, to pull off the shot, we are going to be using the Fusion page inside of Resolve. The one exception here is we are going to be using Mocha Pro, which if you're going to do finishing work, you owe it to yourself to spend the money on Mocha Pro. Get the OFX plugin that you can then use in a bunch of different hosts. Uh, enough said, let's move on. Now I'll go ahead and adjust the grid lines to follow the contours of the eyes. I'll leave the outside edge of points where they are as a frame where nothing will get warped. When you're doing this, make sure you have at least three points for the top lid and another three for the bottom. This will give you the control you need when it comes to fine tuning the eyelid positions. If I switch back to the destination grid, you'll see it's still all straight, distorting the clean plate from where we'd set it up in the source. So this time, I'll choose Copy Source to Destination, and now both grids are aligned again, ready to go. Now you can see things don't look quite right here toward the rim of the glasses. We'll do some additional warping and color correction to dial that in later. Let's load up the on-screen controls for the grid warper by selecting it. And we'll turn off the on-screen controls for the right viewer so they don't obstruct the view. Time to edit. I'll step through the clip until I see the first sign of the eye changing shape. Then I'll back up to the frame before when everything still looked even. To set keyframes for the grid warper, we first need to right click at the bottom of the inspector and choose animate. Now I'll nudge one of the points just to set an initial keyframe. And then I'll move down the timeline and the trick now is to do exaggerated adjustments until you get a clear sense of where the clean plate lid is relative to the current frame's lid position, and then you can ease into a nice alignment. Then I'll step back and forward through the frames so far to make sure things look right at the in-between frames. And review. And the verdict is pretty horrible. She looks like she has some serious palsy of the right eye. All right, don't panic. Things rarely look good the first time around. So let's jump back in and let's first try intensifying the shadow. And I'll add a general blur to the shape, which I can do incidentally because of my solid white background trick. That wouldn't have worked with a straight polygon node. And now when I go to adjust the general shape of the polygon mask, it's already been keyframed. So I want to enable something called multi-frame editing. This will apply the changes you make to the shape across all keyframes in the timeline. So you don't have to individually go and adjust every keyframe and make the same tweaks. That's just a nasty old mess and thankfully the multi-frame mode takes care of that for us. Let's take a look. All right, it's better, but the top section still looks weird. So we'll go back in there and pull it out. And that looks pretty good. Is it perfect? No, but for a 30 frame shot, it's unlikely to be noticed. And if it is, we need to go back in and spend a little bit more time animating the perspective shift of the edge of the clean plate using the warp. And that's actually going to be pretty tricky without a dedicated spline warper. This should hold up to all but the most intense scrutiny. And the whole thing took us all of 20 minutes or so to pull off. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this impossible shot. Now, if you have an impossible challenge that you'd like us to take on, contact us at edu at movieola.com and it might just be our next impossible shot.